Grow, go, glow. Overcomers Church. Changing lives, transforming nations. So I've been talking, last week I talked about three enemies and three weapons. This week is week number two and I'm done with this. And then we move on to Christmas messages and we'll be talking about Christmas next month. And Pastor Woody will be speaking next Sunday. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah, get ready for that. So today I'm going to ask this question from you. Am I generous? If you're taking down notes, this is a good time to write it down. Am I generous? It's a question you've got to ask yourself. Am I generous? Some people just evaluate yourself and you think you're generous. But today as we speak, you will actually know whether you are generous or not. Okay. What is the opposite of generous? Opposites. Yeah. Opposites. Yeah, it's coming. Selfishness is the opposite of thank you. What school? I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're not going to ask what, what school you went to. But I'm saying is, uh, what is the opposite of generousness is selfishness. Okay. John chapter 12 verses 1 to 6. John chapter 12 verses 1 to 6. Let's turn there. John chapter 12 verses 1 to 6. It says, then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. Verse number two, there they made him a supper. And every time where Jesus went, food is important. Somebody say food is important. <laughs> okay. Supper. And Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Verse number three says, then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Verse number four, but one of his disciples, always there is one, you know, one. Somebody say one. You know, sometimes when you're really enjoying, there is one person who comes and, Anyway, uh, I'm not going to go there. But one, you know, one family member. There is that one friend. But one of his disciples, so you can be calm and receive this. If Jesus had one, you having one is okay, you know. Tell your neighbor it's okay. Tell your neighbor it's okay. So it's okay, okay. That one boss, that one co-worker, that one... We didn't come to the church. We're not talking about church, okay? But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son. See, there's a major description about Judas. I, I, I read scripture a lot of times, but I don't see that, you know, Judas, he didn't just say Judas, but Judas, the first name and the last name, and then he talks about the father also. Who would betray him, said, verse number five, why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Verse number six. Then he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a horek. He was a thief. Okay. And had the money box and he used to take what was put in it. Okay. Now, I love how it brings these two characters. One character is who? Who gave generously. Who, who's that? What's his name? Mary. Mary. And then there is this other character. What's his name? Judas. Judas. Okay. Not only betrayed, but here, you know, you see, he was a selfish man. I love how these six verses portray the heart. Because the heart of the matter is a matter of the Matter of the heart. One had a generous heart. The other had a... Say, say, say it, say it. You will get delivered when you say it, you know. Selfish heart. The other had a selfish heart. People like to say the generous word, I'll say it. But selfish is... <laughs> okay. So there are two questions to ask. Why was Mary so generous? And why was Judas so upset? Why was Mary so generous? I'll talk to you in a little bit. 
But why was Judas so upset? Because it revealed his heart. Both actions reveal their heart. So I got three points. Number one, you're wondering why didn't we take the offering? You will know in a moment. Pastor, you forgot the offering. I didn't. <laughs> no, I, I, I didn't. I didn't forget it. <laughs> Okay, number one, the enemy of generosity. The enemy of generosity. Okay, what is the enemy? The opposite of generosity is what? Selfishness. Say it loud, ladies and gentlemen. Selfishness. selfishness. Open your mouth and say it's selfishness. You are addressing that spirit. <laughs> and say, man, selfishness. See, generosity starts with the letter. Letter. G connected to God. Generosity is always connected to God because heaven gave extravagantly generously. Selfishness starts with the letter S and is connected to Satan. <laughs> okay? We are all born selfish, but we are born again generous. When we are born again, we have a new father. And he's... Hallelujah, praise God. When we are born again, we have a new father. And people are like, oh my God, no, a new, new father. In the spirit, we have a new father. And he is the father of all fathers. Yes. Hallelujah. And his heart and DNA is generous. So when you are born, like the, for an example, this is what happens. One of the first words, I know that my kids now got three, but two, you know what they do, you know. Sometimes suddenly you hear, you're intensely working on something, focused on something. This TV sign kind of uh, takes my eye contact with some people, but don't worry, okay. So, uh, one of the things that you hear most often is when you're really doing something, Asha screaming, mine, it's mine, it's mine. How many know what I'm talking about? It's, it's mine, it's mine. And then you're like, oh gosh, you know, you know, like, especially when you're watching a really intense cricket game, you know, and you're like, you're doing something special. I mean, <laughs> you're doing something special. You're watching, you're cheering, you know, you're, you're into it. And then you're mine, mine. You can't hear what the commentators are saying. You can't. And you're like, no, mine, mine. Now you've got to solve it. So you got to, you know, or if you don't solve it, you hear your wife say, Mitch. <laughs> so, yeah. so before you hear that, you try to rectify it, okay? So you go. And then when you see is that Rema is holding on to something. And as he's dragging, it's like, mine, mine. Earlier I said, even if you have money, there is something that you need greater than money. Peace. Sometimes when it's silent. Peace. Sometimes when it's silent. You, I, I, I don't know whether you get what I'm saying. So, so it's like, Rema, just give it to him. Like, but then Rema is saying, no, but it's mine. <laughs> but then it's mine. I'm like, Rema. He has taken all the stones of my pots and thrown. All the pots that I put, all those nice stones, like three times. He's taken all my stones. Just give it to him. <laughs> Just give it to him. That's the only time that justice does not matter because you want peace <laughs> over justice. <laughs> then, of course, I have to have, uh, my wife talks to me, then I have to have chats with my daughter that, you know, uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> but uh, it's a long thing. That's not right. But, 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 but I want you to understand this. I want you to understand. They hold on to something, you know, the selfish nature in us wants to hold on to what is mine. And even if it's not yours, you always want to say, mine. But you, do you know that one of those places that there is only actually really one, one of those places that you see that God says it's mine. You know where it is? 
in Malachi chapter 3, when he talks about the tithes. He says, it's mine. Don't touch it, because it's mine. Now people go silent, okay? They like the jokes, they like everything. But now, pastor, when you talk about this, please don't make any eye contact, pastor. <laughs> By the Spirit of God, I won't make any contact, but, you know. I... Why do I speak about these things? I'll tell you. One of the things I want to thank the whole congregation at Overcomers is I want to commend you because you've been givers. Okay, you've been givers. I want to commend you. I want to thank you. And as one of the pastors here, shepherds here, one of the main things that I got to do is to take you to green pastures. And to take you to green pastures, I need to steer you to take you to green pastures. So if I don't talk about your finances, because one of the main reasons that you get created, you are here, you, one of the reasons that you come is to see prosperity breakthrough. But if I don't tell you the secrets that is necessary for you to live that blessed life, what is the point of it? People don't like to pass us. Some pastors, even at congregations, to talk about tithes and offerings, they call another pastor from somewhere else to come and talk. It's like your parents don't want to correct some things. Tell your uncle, uh, Mitchell is a riot. Can you come and tell him this? You know? <laughs> you un but that is not right. True parenting is you tell. You tell it all. I love you enough to tell you. Tithes, such an important thing. Such an important thing. And he says, tithes, don't touch it. Somebody say don't. Okay? Now the heart of uh, Judas has also been seen here. Because he says, Hayo, aparade. In Hebrew. <laughs> In Hebrew, he was like, Hayo, aparade. <laughs> what? what is this woman? Is he off her head? For a moment. Is he off her head? Pouring in vain. What a waste. Have you heard those? Our parents. Uh, what a waste. People say, what a waste. Because actually he didn't care about this poor. Because you see his heart. He was a selfish man. He was always looking at everything with money. Money, 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 money. Money, baby. It's all about the money. It's all about the money. It's all about the ding, 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 ding. That's a strong, uh, song of some of your eras. So praise God. <laughs> Someone like, oh, what is that song? I, Bevan is like, what is that? <laughs> what is he even singing? You know, it's about it's about the money. And here you see this guy. He's not concerned about the poor, but he makes nice statements. Have you seen people? who make night nice statements, but actually don't care. He doesn't care about the Kandadunna Fai. Because if you really want to Kandadunna Fai, you will sell your stuff and you will Kandadunna Fai. What good English? Singlish. Uh, people from Africa can't understand, but they will have interpretation. Okay. If you really, okay, Judas had the money box. It says that Judas, in the first point, I'm taking a little bit more time. Judas had the money box. Actually, Jesus' traveling ministry, there was a guy who was handling the money. And who was handling the money? Judas. Now, do you think that Jesus didn't know that he was a thief? Because two years before when he was chosen to be one of the disciples, he says, I have chosen the twelve. But one of you is the devil. He's in the scripture. So he already knew that this guy is of the devil. But he gave a chance. Wow. What a gracious God we serve. Come on, somebody. What a gracious, what a gracious God we serve. He knew what a gracious God we serve. He knew of, he is of the devil and still he gives. He's a thief. He knows that but gives the money of the traveling ministry. There are many scriptures, we're not going to go there, that people gave for Jesus to do the ministry. We, we, we're not going to go there, but Jesus, and this guy was keeping, and it says that time and time again, he was taking the money off, you know. God give us, gives us an opportunity every time to see whether we will honor him. 
first thing that I do or we do of anything we get, first thing, ladies and gentlemen, first thing, everybody say first. Principle of the first. First thing is tithes. Very rarely we miss it. Very rarely we miss to get, put the tithes aside. First. First. Everybody say first. first. Not second. First. I don't pay the gas and I don't pay the current bill and then. No. First. Because he wants to be first. Judah stole from the money box and God called him a Thief. Now there's another scripture. Are you awake? If you're not awake, okay, please, please get the person next to you awake. Woken up, okay? Please, online, I don't know. But now there's another place that God speaks and says that you are a thief. It's in Malachi chapter 3. You rob me. And you ask how? To your tithes and offerings. Now I know the offering bag will be passed. Deacon Nilanga is here and some of the others. They will pass. The, now is, have, you, have you seen people when the offering bag is passed? They don't put but they shape, take. Maru ne aram maru. Maru maru ne aram maru na So they take it. and So have you seen people do that? Of course in this church I have not. At least, you know, I don't know whether the lights are dark and I, I'm just kidding. <laughs> People don't know it. You put. But let me ask a question. Now, is there anybody stealing from the offering bag? Offering bag or boxes, I don't know. So many things are there. But let me ask this question from you. Do you have anything that belongs to God in your bank account? I'll leave the answer to you. <laughs> pastor, good stuff, Pastor. Keep preaching. My mother was always roller gana fine. You know, roller. From one to another, one to another, one to another. Now it's not a term that they use. You know, they talk about other, other things. No, Bevan, what can I, we'll ask Bevan later. Uh, they, they don't talk about roller, but they, they used to do this roller. Ask, you know, take some money, loan some money today and live off it. When you get the pay, you pay the loan and then live. And then when it's not enough, again, you take it. You keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. And she was going to church and she was still the same. One day, I remember, we used to call it Kota Pastor. But pa pastor had a name. I, I, now I have forgotten the name also. <laughs> For a moment. But he used to come every week. And one day she, he taught about tithes. And when he talked about tithes, my mother was like, inne. she was having these thoughts. My mother is on here. But then she thought, okay, I will not give the full 10%, I'll give 5%. So that first month, she gave 5%. The month that she gave 5%, she was able to pay off all the debts and live and still remain. So that this is the only time the word of God says, test me. Test me. Your finances. And as soon as from that day, I'm talking about 30 years ago plus, from that day onwards, she has never stopped giving because she increased to 10% and she has been a giver all her life and she's been generous and she has seen when my dad could not, she, he was an alcoholic, he did not bring any pay, but from her savings and I don't know how, from being a teacher, she built a house, raised two kids. My father was gone when I was 13 years old, did all of that and much more. Why? God first. Number two. Number two, before you fall asleep. Uh, the, the First was the, what? The enemy. Number two, the, the extravagance of generosity. Now in the Bible, when you read the Bible, you see many times people give generously. Generously, people are giving so, I mean, so many gifts. Let me tell you, I, I don't know whether you know this, but I'll tell you this. Do you know how much David gave to the temple? King David. He was a popular man. 
He was the most successful king in uh, Israel. Do you know how much he gave? Anybody? Guess us. $21 billion worth of stuff. You can come later. I'll tell you how the accounts are made. Huh? The account of everything that he gave now is $21 billion. <laughs> Talk about extravagance. And then you're wondering, how did this guy get such portion of the Bible? A reward, I'll be talking about it, comes. Extravagant giving releases extraordinary living. Dinesh Michel. Yeah. Extravagant giving will release extraordinary living. I'm not talking something by theory. I'm talking by experience. Then also we have a widow with two mites. I don't have 21 billion pastor to give. <laughs> it's okay. You can get there. He started as a shepherd boy, ended up as the greatest king because his life was all about giving. Think about it. Widow with two mites. It's about the heart. Everybody say heart. heart. Mary gave. What did Mary give? What did Mary give? Perfume. And how much was it worth? How much was it worth? Huh? 300? It's there. It's an open book test. You, if you have the book, it's open book. <laughs> 300 denarii. So normally, 300 denarii was a, like a, something that they used all the time to say that it is the wage, wages for one year. Okay, it's a, no, wages for one year. One denarii for one day, most probably. 300 days of working, 300 denarii. So that was in one go, extravagant. Somebody say extravagant. Mary gave in one go the whole salary of a whole year. Is that extravagant? Think about what you make today and multiply it by 12. And if one moment if you give it, silence. It's like the seventh seal in Revelation chapter 7. Broken and silence fill the room. Okay, could you give an extravagant offering to the Lord that makes a mark? You know, I believe in your lifetime, God will always give you opportunity and speak to you to give some extravagant offerings. One day I remember I came out here, I only had 1,200 rupees in my wallet. And uh, that was when Rema uh, was, I think, three or four months old. 1,400, 1,200 rupees. I stood here. I was about to put the 100 and the Lord says, put everything. For a moment, the first reaction that came to my mind is what? What comes, the first reaction that comes to you when God speaks to you and give, what is the first reaction that comes to you? <laughs> fear comes to you, right? I don't know how, whether you get it. Fear comes to you. The first reaction when God speaks to you and tells you to do something, is fear. I, but then, you have to break the fear and still in fear, you still have to go obey him. Because you know, I gave the 1,200, I walk out of here and I know now when my, my wife will be asking, did you bring the milk home? So I had, to, I had kept that to buy the milk and that's what all, all I had. I remember I, I go to the bank um, and to check the card, there was 10,000 rupees. And I, I can tell you story after story after story, but I want to tell you this one thing. Sometimes what we hold back, and we feel like, oh man, amaruing pastor, amaruing. And that is an extravagant moment, and when you give that, you break something. Somebody say, I break something. Do you see, here, let me ask you a question. Do you think God wants your money? We are having Tara here. It is all gold. Heaven's roads are made of gold. Here we are eating Tara. 
okay even the golden gate no or whatever they call it i don't know something golden gate or they put a nice name go it's not golden only the lights make it golden <laughs> somebody else must have got the gold but that's a different thing <laughs> that's a golden gate for somebody else but we will not go there but i am trying to tell you does he need your does he need your money does he need your finances please don't fall asleep man wake up and tell your people to be up and i mean put your phone put your camera on so that you will not fall asleep i am here to tell you you know the new jerusalem how big it is it is made out of gold and precious stones it says the new jerusalem will be 1380 miles long 1380 miles long 80 miles high 80 miles wide and all gold and precious stones he needs your money is attitude of the heart okay uh, now people say pastor it's the heart no pastor is the heart that matters then if the heart that matters then why don't you give i'll tell you why why you're holding on to your treasure is in the money and jesus said where your treasure is there is your heart also that's why sometimes you need to break and give so that you there are three levels of giving in the bible every giving can be put into three levels everybody say three okay number one is tithing i mean that is a no brainer if you're not not tithing that's a no brainer like it's done deal 10th one tenth belongs to him you give to him you don't ask questions you give to him because it belongs to him thank you for the amen of one person hallelujah i hope other people's are, other people are tithing praise god <laughs> number two the second level is offerings and third level is extravagant giving or somebody said painful offerings one day a uh, few weeks ago we were ready for our delivery baby baby delivery i had i always plan you know that's why i always say extravagant giving is good but also you should be a good manager of what you have god will not give people who don't manage well finances extravagant live, giving is good but people want extravagant living sometimes but don't manage what they have anyway i'll not go there that's a different sermon i was ready and one day that night i was scrolling and i saw the post said that this one of our friends needed 50000 or 75000 for the baby delivery in a private hospital and it needed to be heaven in 24 hours i said this testimony i think but in 24 hours or 48 hours uh, they 24 hours they needed to do the delivery so immediately slot spoke to me and said give 50000 first reaction fear what will happen to our baby's delivery i'm am i can i be real this is what you the first thought that falls is what is going to happen to you selfishness always wants you to think about yourself first but if you obey god i gave the 50000 right away i bang we are i kill again i said we got to give the 50000 she said okay no bang we gave the 50000 do you know the amount of for the delivery went far much less than what i thought plus in that time period the money that we received was far much greater than i could imagine yeah. extravagant giving i'm not going to go i mean there is so much of things to say but you know do you know that only in the current church context they did a survey in america and found out that only 10% of the church is actually giving tithes in sri lanka will not do the survey <laughs> overcomers but i i want to commend overcomers at least a uh, 70% of overcomers is tithing and i'll tell you that is why you see the hand of the lord over your life i'm not joking about this this is serious stuff you want to be blessed you want to be blessed then listen to his principles because his principles will bring the promise his principles will bring the provision follow the promise principle everybody say principle number 3 number 3 the reward of generosity i'll be done with it get ready with your wallets get ready to give to the lord 
uh, at home get ready to give to the lord okay don't like oh man i'm at home i don't have to give i thank i uh, thank you for people who have been sending digital receipts and people who have been depositing thank you we pray for those receipts i said anybody who sends we are praying we are praying over those because we are believing god to do and release what god can do but unless you obey no matter whether i pray with rosemary oil olive oil bottle oil oil from israel oil from golgotha i can give breakthrough oil from babra ventrobel and pray over you what is the point if your heart is not obedient god cannot do nothing right okay mark 14:5 reward of generosity this story has been said in the gospels mark i'll read this and i'll be done you know five minutes mark 14:5 no amen even i thought hearts and likes will come but hearts and likes are far today but it's okay i'm just speaking what the lord has put in my heart uh, mark 14:5 again you see that this story has been said and here it says for it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor and they criticize her sharply but jesus said leave her alone do not trouble her for she has done a good work for okay number 9 verse number 9 i'll read verse number 9 here assuredly i say to you wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world everybody say whole world this woman what this woman has done will be told as a memory memorial to her wow do you know that when you extravagantly give your story will not last for your lifetime oh man come on you will be such a history maker that even after 2000 years jesus said this and i am speaking from that story why but jesus said what you did what you did when you gave generously what you did will be spoken okay why did mary give such a generous gift i asked that question first two months before this her brother was dead and jesus brought him back to life grateful people are generous people grateful people are generous people you know i give i have given of my life you know i given of my life i would have done so many other things so i have given of my life but that's a different thing but we give as a family we give because when we sit i sit with at the house and say oh my god i can't believe i can't believe god how good you have been to me i give because he is so good to me do you know that lazarus was dead and jesus brought him back to life but how many know that we were dead in sin and because of heaven's generous gift we are alive how many if you one of your family members were dead and they were resurrected will you be grateful yes so of hands so of hands so of hands will you be grateful you will you be grateful let me ask you a question you were dead and now you live will you be generous we all have been raised from the dead generosity means giving without expecting anything in return selfishness is always you give i give my tithes then the lord will give back to me you know? no need of giving tithes i'll just give a offering pass send the dunna monari hati see kola dunno tati shape page mitti mola wala denda so that nobody sees it i'll tell you there is nothing no bold to please but only the father man i'm speaking some good stuff here real stuff here <laughs> hebrews 11:6 says he is a rewarder i'm going to without faith it is impossible to please him which is faith you know to give you had need faith must believe that he is 
and that he is everybody say he is a rewarder of those who diligently he is a rewarder that word rewarder in greek has six syllables five of those syllables are to say that you are paying back something you will get a payback for something but the seventh syllable says this to reward with extravagance when you give to him you will be rewarded with extravagance for an example man i have two minutes i'm trying to say you lost your wallet okay you lost your wallet somebody brings it back to you and there was only 5000 rupees but when the person brought the wallet back you give the person 50000 for bringing the wallet and they were wondering hey there was only 5000 i didn't steal the 5000 i brought the 5000 why do you give me 50000 extravagance is a reward pastor melanie block is the prime example she lived to give even pastor odi who's on this does not know some people that she has given finances health and he doesn't even know i know how many people she has helped her life she would not she would hesitate to buy a blouse but never would hesitate to help somebody now now i'm not saying you know ah okay don't give to the church just go and take care of the poor no ah, that's where you get it wrong that's what this guy also thought if you take care of the poor it's okay church has money no man no but belongs to god belongs to god what you got to give to god you got to give to god man i'm preaching so good i need to go home and listen to the recording <laughs> god is a rewarder god is a he is he is means he is now not he was he is he is a rewarder so you might think like oh nobody sees but i'll tell you one thing he sees and the reward is this her name and people talk about her in generations in nations because of her life of giving and i want to encourage you give she gave her life but not only she gave her life but then she gave financially she gave fast body and them both of them have given i mean all of this is a result of they don't even have their own house in sri lanka no house given 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 for the kingdom remember he is a rewarder somebody say rewarder so now if you need to write and look put you raise your hand and our <laughs> okay online uh, the uh, the the online all of the information to give will appear please do give don't that's why i say don't give wait without giving from home now you separate if you're not here separate the tithes when you come next week you can put the tithes we can do the offering you know one person said pastor i only get paid 3000 So I don't need to type. No. You give with what you have and you will see. God another person said, you know, please pray for me. We are struggling financially. I asked this question, do you type? No pastor with what we have is so with what you have, you still type. The next month, those guys type. Immediately he received a promotion. These are not joking stuff. This is real stuff. Are you getting what I'm saying? Right let's stand together as we pray. Father we pray for our hearts. Help us to get out of selfishness in any area of our life. Lord let this message not my words but your words begin to resonate speak to each person because you want every family to walk into blessing. In a season that heaven gave most extravagantly as we enter you didn't say I'll give the second best you didn't say I'll give you I'll give later. you gave right there right then the best lord help us to carry that same dna give the best put you first so that we will see we walk in blessing even when the economy and crazy things are happening in the country we know we are connected to a heavenly economy would you raise your hands right now and say lord jesus right now touch my heart make my heart tender Let my heart treasure what is yours. Anything attached to money, I choose to break it. To put you first in Jesus' name. And everybody said.
Amen. Even as I prayed that prayer, I want to tell you, if you are not tithing, tithe, tithe, start tithing this month. You know why? When you start tithing, it breaks the curse. And then other things come and you will be surprised. Uh, leaders will go and uh, collect the offering at this time as this song has been sung. Anybody who's giving online, you can transfer, you can separate right now as well. And you can sing this song with us. Grow, go, glow. Overcomers Church. Changing lives, transforming nations.